Welcome to Dragon Slayer Update. This month, it's win or go home as the Region 20 tournament gets underway. Coach Carrie's Dragons battle the defending district champs and will meet national champions Ashley Dolkoff, Gary Smolyak, and All-American Jonte Miles in this month's Dragon Close-Up. We'll start with men's lacrosse. Howard takes on Anna Rundle in the Region 20 tournament. Mark Zeno anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. Howard midfielder Ryan Mannion is here to break down this postseason rematch. The winner advances to the Region 20 championship and is all but guaranteed a spot in the national tournament. Dragons won the regular season meeting at Anne Arundel. The Pioneers went up 4-0 early, scoring in transition and off rebounds. Howard responded with a five-goal run and clinched the two-seed with the come-from-behind win. Howard has won four straight. They entered the game ranked seventh in the nation. Ryan, describe your team's mentality. We were emotionally ready, physically ready, and we were ready to dominate. We banded together before the season started, dating back to summer ball. Because of that, we established team unity. We had each other's backs, and we didn't let anyone slip out of place. The Pioneers entered the game ranked fourth in the national poll. All-Americans Sean Flounlacker and Timothy Brown anchor one of the nation's best defenses. Anna Rundle has held 13 opponents to single digits this season. Ryan, what do you expect to see on defense from Anna Rundle? They're physical on ball, they slide very well, and their goalie, Michael Brennan, is a brick wall. Brennan's going to force us to hit the corner. The winner moves on to the Region 20 Championship and all but locks up a ticket to Nationals. Let's go to the Dragons' Lair. First quarter, Hunter Centrone takes on the short stick, goes to goal line extended, backs up and buries it high, Anna Rundle on the board. Once again, here's Citrone storming into the box. Dodges, feeds it in front to Reese Sullivan for the quick stick, and it's 2 nothing Pioneers. Number three in black is winning the matchup against our short sticks. He's on fire early. We're trying to lock him off. Carson Beckin catches Citrone in stride. He's all alone, 3 nothing Anna Rundle. Tom Koss inverts, attacks Kaysler's side, gets double teamed. Not much you can do about that. Pioneers getting it done on the defensive end. Down 4 nothing. Howard looks to get going. Anna Rundle puts the pole on Matt Gray. Passes to Matt Morton. Logan Harthman breaks it up. Pioneers are sliding early, getting their sticks in the air and clogging the passing lanes. Quick stick on the doorstep. Ryan Robinson with the assist. Nathan Neal on the finish. 5 0 Anna Rundle. Pioneers defense pitching a shutout in the first 20 minutes. Brock went up top to Morton. Over to Gray. Robinson gets the pull on him, lands the trail check. Another defensive stand for Anna Rundle. Two minutes to the half, Cody Martin dodges, loses his band, overhand release, and he scores! Great swim move, well placed shot in the opposite corner. Cody is a great player, one of our best threats on offense. Dragon shut out Anna Rundle in the second quarter. Momentum is swinging Howard's way. Second half, 5-3 Anna Rundle. James Dickey picked up by Klotz. Klotz lets him know he's there. Dickey to Sullivan, dropped by Morton. Three Dragons are on the ground ball, Morton wins it. Here comes Howard in transition. Ricky Dubois to Glenn Lucas, off the pipe. All-American Timothy Brown wins the ground ball for Anna Rundle. Other end of the field, Patrick Cavanaugh makes him pay. A two goal swing for Anna Rundle. Cavanaugh threads a needle right through the gap. Fourth quarter, 6-3 Anna Rundle. Anthony Pagnotta won the faceoff for Howard but an unforced error gives it right back to Anna Rundle. Thomas Cavanaugh secures the possession, finds Robinson wide open on the run. Robinson into the box, lets it fly, and finds the back of the net. 15 yards out, that shot should have been saved. You gotta see that ball coming. Howard has 13 minutes to erase a four goal deficit. Zach McElroy makes a play on defense. Watch him box out number 10 in black and let Jerron get the ground ball. Zach is the most consistent person on the team. On the other end, Brock Went lowers his shoulder, improves his angle, and fires a haymaker. With defenders draped all over him, Went comes up big. Ensuing faceoff, Anthony Pagnotta wins it for Howard. He's won 11 of 14 faceoffs, but an unforced error gives it right back to Anna Rundle. We have been throwing the ball away all season. 10 minutes, 7-4 Pioneers. Edward Hartle up against Jerron Brooks. Jerron does a good job taking away top side. Lucky ground ball off the deflection off Ricky. On the other end, Went passes to Morton behind the cage. He moves it to Morton. Another unforced error for the Dragons. Pardo guarded by Glenn Lucas. 
Lucas gets a stick on him and forces the turnover. Timely stop from the Glen Elk High School grad. Went up top to Glotz. Anna Rundle sends Brown at him. Ball's loose. Clownlacker emerges with the ground ball. Four minutes, Anna Rundle's man up offense on the field. They move it to Neal. Denied by Andrew Cilio, and he vacates the crease to get the rebound. The man down defensive stand keeps Howard alive. Three minutes, Howard down by three. Martin gets above goal line extended. Long pole, Logan Harthman is all over him. Martin, high to low. Michael Brennan with the save, that's his 12th of the game. Final minute, Dubois pressures the ball. Citrone gets to the middle of the field. Takes the shot, stick save made by Cilio. Dubois wins the ground ball. Excellent deep ball to Morton. Morton to Cody Martin. He's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Martin puts it away. We know how to transition the ball very well. Cody gets behind the defense for an easy goal. 20 seconds on the clock. Face-off violation goes against Anna Rundle. Pagnata, ahead to Gray, looks inside, pulls back and moves it to Morton. Morton feeds. Dan Kaplan with the quick stick. With 14 seconds on the clock, Howard has a chance to force overtime. Biggest face-off of the year, Pagnata versus Flaunlacher. Pagnata wins it cleanly. Anthony is the best face-off man in the nation. He brings it back, lets Klotz on the wing to pick it up. Howard calls a timeout with 10 seconds remaining. Matt Morton, he has two assists in the last 50 seconds. He's guarded by Brown. Morton draws the slide, feeds it up top, but he can't connect with Wendt. He tried to get it to Dan or Cody to find a hole in the goal. Matt swept across top side looking for Tom and Brock, but the ball gets away. And Anne Arundel ends Howard's season. Welcome back to Dragon Sports Radio. I'm Louis Garcia, along with Dragons lacrosse coach Eric Faust. Welcome, coach. Thank you, Louis. Coach, what did what did you say to the team after after that loss? Um, you know, to be to be honest, I don't remember what I said to him exactly. I, I know I certainly know how I was feeling, and I I think I'm pretty um, certain of how most of uh, the players were feeling. You know, the tough thing about about that game was it wasn't lack of effort as to why we lost um you know we the team played well for the majority of the game uh, we actually held Anne Arundel scoreless for 34 minutes straight we just um we started very slow and went down 5-0 in the first quarter and uh you know anytime you do that against a team like Anna Rundel, a quality, well-coached opponent, you know, it's really hard to dig yourself out. And, you know, the guys battled back. There was a minute, maybe 10 seconds left, and we were down 7-4. to four. And uh, we scored two goals, got the ball back, had about 15 seconds left. I called timeout, and, um, you know, we set up a play, and everything worked right until the last couple seconds when, uh, you know, um, we didn't execute. And... Uh, you know, unfortunately, we lost that ball game, and unfortunately, uh, it was the end of our season. Um, you know, there there, uh, there wasn't anything I could say to sugarcoat anything to the guys. I think everybody, everybody understood the finality of everything, and, and I was I was pretty, um, you know, I was I was it was tough because a lot of these guys that are are leaving HCC and moving on to you know four year schools, I have very close and tight relationships with so unfortunately I, I i won't be able to coach them ever again unless it's like old man league and you know i'm coaching them when they're adults which won't happen but <laughs> when they're in their 40s and yeah you know, yeah that'll be my 60s all wheeling around but, yeah <laughs> yeah so what are your plans now for the off season recruiting um i uh, actually started couple days after we lost in that game um i've been up to canada michigan into ohio um and then for the majority of the summer i'll be in this area in in maryland at uh at, at club tournaments um and i'll probably go back up to canada a couple times because my my hometown's in detroit or right outside of detroit and windsor's you know a 40 minute drive so you know i think it's important for me to build relationships um, you know, in areas outside of Maryland, because not a lot of uh, lacrosse players know that opportunities like this exist. So all in all, this is your first year as head coach here at, at HCC. Um, what, what do you think? 
Oh, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I, I, <laughs> I, um, I'm very, very happy here. I'm, I, I think it's just such an honor to be uh, given this opportunity to coach these young men. Um, you know, it's 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 a great. This is a great school, and um, you know, I love that I have you know the chance to really play a big role in a lot of these guys' lives. You know, I can help you know, facilitate communication with other colleges and other coaches. And, and, and then, you know, hopefully uh, these guys will continue to love and play the game and give back to the game one day. You know, and that's that's honestly what my goal is as a coach. It's not necessarily wins and losses. Those are nice, but, they, you know, the wins will come. The wins will come with, uh, you know, my system I believe in. And so, you know, um, I'm really, really happy here. I'm, I'm very I feel very fortunate, very lucky to have this position. And, um, you know, I really want to build a, a national power here at HCC. Well, Coach, thanks again for coming in. I wish you luck in recruiting this summer, and let's touch bases again in the fall. Thank you, Louie. Thanks a lot. Coach Eric Faust, thank you for joining us. It's time for women's lacrosse. Coach Carrie's Dragons battle the defending district champions. Howard enters the game ranked fourth in the nation. The highlight of their season so far was the program's first ever win against Anne Arundel. Dragons are averaging 13 goals per game. All-American Charlotte Wilkinson's ability to consistently win draws generates extra opportunities for Howard's offense. The Pioneers won this tournament last year. They've won two straight and look to be peaking. Anne Arundel has a skilled offense. Two Pioneers rank among the nation's top 10 goal scorers. The winner advances to the district semis. Let's go to the Dragons' lair. First half, Pioneers off to a quick start. Olivia Pittman gets above goal line extended and puts it away. A two goal lead for the defending champs. Cassidy Savaggio wins the ground ball, takes it north to south. Savaggio finishes high and it's a three goal lead for Anna Rundle. Settled seven on seven situation for Anna Rundle. Jordan Hufton wide open in front. Pioneers are on fire. Five goals in the first 15 minutes. Dragons have it. Lisa Don to Erica Heapy. She draws the double, gets the pass off to Charlotte Wilkinson. Beautiful off-ball movement from 14 and White. If he gets open, she turns and fires. Terrific play from the exercise science physical therapy major. Howard is down two. Here's Lisa Bianchini. Slick dodge, splits the double team. LB finishes with the bouncer. Dragons respond with three unanswered, and we have a one goal game. Howard won the draw. Once again, Wilkinson is the distributor. She keeps her head up. Goes to Hefe, high to low, and ties the game. Excellent job of mixing up the shot placement by Erica Hefe. An Anne Arundel foul gives Hefe a free position shot. Once again, she changes planes with her shot. Hefe scores three goals in a span of nine minutes, and Howard takes the lead. Another draw control for Howard sets up the unsettled opportunity. Jamie Tortowitz feeds it to Wilkinson. Nice face dodge. She has her defender beat and gets it done with the overhand right. Howard has outscored Anna Rundle 7-1 over the last 13 minutes. One minute to the half, Erica Kopp dodges. High to low, she gets one back for the Pioneers. 8-7 Dragons lead at the half. Anna Rundle foul sets up another free position for Howard. Bianchini makes him pay. Hat trick for the secondary education major and a two-goal lead for the Dragons. Next Howard possession, Katia Rendazzo operates from behind. Gives it to Tortowitz and she's guarded by Victoria Alexander. Absorbs the contact, improves her angle, and beats the goalie low. Terrific effort from the sophomore out of Oakland Mills High School. Howard's offense goes back to work. Wilkinson to Bianchini. Wilkinson and a defender get tangled up. Officials call a foul on Wilkinson, then hit Bianchini with a yellow card. Dragons will have to play without Bianchini for two minutes. Free position for Anna Rundel. Cop puts it away. Pioneers are back within two. 20 minutes to play. Howard won the draw. Here's Katie Brooks. Savaggio knocks it loose, Brooks regains possession. Savaggio stays on her, forces the turnover, big defensive stand for Anna Rundle. After the turnover, Olivia Pittman goes to work. What a dodge, she gets underneath, scores with the lefty rip, we have a one goal game. Dragons win the draw, Charlotte Hines all over Michelle Sparling. Hines with the trail check. Gerde wins the ground ball for Anna Rundle. Other end of the field, watch number 22 in blue on the left. Tremendous off-ball movement. She gets to the doorstep and ties the game. Howard just turned it over. 15 minutes to play. Savaggio up against Claudia Fuscios. She stays with her. Lisa Don slides, forces the turnover. 
Don wins the ground ball and marches down the field. Free position for Wilkinson. She fires. Bittinger blocks it, but can't control the rebound. Wilkinson regains the lead for Howard. Dragons won the draw. They can make it a two-possession game. Tortoritz to Heafy. Bittinger with the save. She runs it out, extends her stick, and backs it up for Anna Rundle. Great hustle from the sophomore out of Severna Park. Other end, free position for Savaggio. Buries the bounce shot, and we have a tie game. Anna Rundle won the draw, but turned it over. Dragons in transition. Wilkinson to Heafy. Bittinger makes the save and hauls in the rebound. Other end of the field, Savaggio. She goes back to the bounce shot, and once again, it does the job. Anna Rundle regains the lead with eight minutes remaining. Pioneers won the draw. Cop fires. Denied by Lanaya Preston. Timely stop for the Dragons freshman. Here comes Bianchini in transition. She flies down the field. Howard can tie it. She goes to Wilkinson. Three defenders swore her and forced the turnover. Big time stop from Anna Rundle's defense. Later in the possession, four minutes to play. Gerday, overhand right, makes it a two-go lead, and Howard is in trouble. Dragons win the draw, 3.40 to play. Howard needs a score. Porterwitz takes it to X, gets above goal unextended, looking to improve her angle. Defense collapses, and she can't hold on. Hines wins the ground ball, another crucial stop for Anna Rundle. Pioneers are running out the clock, final minute. Hines up against Kirsten Borden. Terrific stick check, loose ball. Borden gets it back for Howard. 23 seconds, Dragons need two goals. They go to Bianchini, she splits the double. High to low, Bittinger blocks it. 13 to 11 is your final. Anna Rundle puts an end to the Dragons season. It's a pleasure to welcome head coach Diana Carey. Welcome coach. Thank you, Diane. How do you think your team played against Anna Rundle? Well, I thought we played very well. We came out with a lot of heart. Um, I thought we did a lot of things extremely well. Unfortunately, we, we came up a little short. Now, how tough was it to finish with Anne Arundel in the regular season, then turn right around, and in the playoffs, first round, you get Anne Arundel again? Very tough. First of all, Anne Arundel is an excellent team. They're very, very well coached. And, of course, anytime you have to play a team three times in a season, it's always going to be a tough one. Um, and, uh, as I say, unfortunately, we came up on the short end of the stick, but uh, I thought our girls played with a lot of heart. So who stepped up in that particular game? Well, I think um, our center, Charlotte Wil Wilkinson, is really fantastic. She just has a knack for getting the draw. And, you know, she was really, really important. Um, I thought that uh, Lisa Biantini was also very, very good. She just never gives up, 100% hustle. And I thought our defense played well, but I think we had a couple of lapses where we just sort of lost a couple of steps and uh, the slides, second slides and third slides weren't there. Now, you beat Anna Runda for the first time mm -hmm. in our history, like we said earlier. How do you build on this for next season? Well, I think the important thing knowing now is that there isn't one team out there that's going to beat everybody. Um, now it's up for grabs. So every game that you go into, you know this could be yours. And so that does bring a different mindset. I think in years past, when you played Anne Arundel, you thought, uh-oh, how much are we going to lose by? Now it's, we're going to win and you know we can do it so it's it's a different mindset and it's great and do you think it was tough going into that Anne Arundel game before the playoffs knowing that if you beat Anne Arundel for that second time you would have taken home the Juco championship and we've never been in a position to do that before yes yes that was um it was it was difficult to lose that um because I really thought we could get it but as I say, unfortunately, it just wasn't our day. And so we fell from what would have been second place to fourth place. But do you think having that opportunity and then having all these kids coming back, that's something that you can really build oh, on? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, the girls next year, are, they're already saying, we're definitely going to nationals. Um, they know they can do it. They know the areas that we need to work on. And most of it is, it's more mental than it is physical. Um, I think for a lot of players, they haven't been taught before of how really to take care of the ball. You don't need to win by 10 goals, you just need to win by one. So if you can learn how to take care of the ball and not throw the ball away, you will prevail. Now, when did these kids really come together this season? Was there a specific moment, a specific game that you saw them starting to gel? No, actually, really right from the beginning. Um, we did very sort of low-key fall ball, uh, which was fun because we kind of got, you know, the girls together and um, 
again, it was, you know, very low key, so it wasn't any high pressure, but we had a couple of play days, which was fun. And then, this, you know, we had uh, four girls from soccer play, and so when they came and joined us, it, they're very good athletes, and so it really all just kind of came together then. Thanks, Coach Kerry. Thank you, Diane. Up next, Steve Musselman breaks down the track and field national championships. Dragon's Lair Update will be back. Summers for everyone at Howard Community College. Make learning fun with camps and programs for kids and teens. Pick up credits in one of our many convenient summer sessions. Upgrade your job skills. Explore a hobby. Classes fill fast, so register today. Go to howardcc.edu slash summer. Summers for everyone at Howard Community College. Welcome back. My next guest brought home Howard Community College's first national championship in 2013. Co-head coach Steve Musselman joins me now. Welcome, Coach. Thank you, Diane. Coach, what were your expectations going into this year's nationals? Uh, at the beginning of the season, we knew we weren't as deep before for the men. So we, we wanted to put people in the right places where they knew to be successful. Uh, about two weeks before the, the, the championships, Eric and I went and scored the meet. We figured we'd score 65 points. We actually went with 67. We, we finished seventh. Uh, we were hoping for top five. So there's a little disappointment there, but once people got there, pe people put out, people really did a great job. Coach, how proud are you of Alex Warfield's achievement at the Nationals? I, I was very pleased for Alex. Last year, he didn't race up to the expectations we had set. So we knew we wanted to come back this year and set the goal of winning the eight. We, we worked for this the whole time. He, he, he actually qualified 1,500, but we were just going to target eight since we, we, we knew we weren't in for the team hunt. So when we were training Alex at the same time, I was also watching McIntyre from Rockville because I knew he would be the finalist. So we developed a, a plan. Uh, Alex trusted. We knew that if he was with McIntyre with 300 meters to go, it, it would be over because McIntyre is a hard, aggressive runner, but he doesn't finish very well. So between Alex, myself, and Coach Helen, we developed a good training program that this had the success that Alex had, and he executed it, and I was so happy for him. Talk about Ashley Dolkoff's national performance. She was a surprise and a half to us. I mean, we knew going in from the couple of indoor meets that she was going to be tough, but in her semifinal round, she won her heat by four seconds, and in 400 meters, that's a huge gap. And, and everyone else was going, oh, and, you know, she ran. Uh, she was a little tired going through rounds, so when she won the final, it wasn't by as much, but still a very dominant performance by Ashley. We were very happy for her. So winning the 400 meters like she did, mm -hmm. national champion, what was her reaction to that? She, she was overjoyed, but then she's, she's also one of those athletes that's very hard on themselves. She, she, she won, she looked at the clock, and there's a smile, but there's still a little reserved because she wanted to go faster. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Diane. It's time to meet three athletes that played a key role for Coach Musselman's Dragons at Nationals. Let's go to Mary Lee Adams for this month's Dragon Close-Up. As HCC's track and field squad made its way to Utica for Nationals, three of their top athletes had one thing in common. They were all first-year Dragons. Ashley Dahlgolf might be the biggest surprise for HCC this year. She was one of only two Dragons to win at Nationals, taking first in the women's 400 meters. Not a bad feat for someone in their first year of college. But what makes this even more surprising? Oh, this is my first season running track. Her previous experience was in basketball. You know, she, I believe she played for Glenelg Country School, then uh, she went to Old Dominion but suffered a concussion, then came home and ended up at Howard. I'm competitive and I just wanted to continue playing uh, college sports. So, Technique, it's hard. It's hard to switch from uh, basketball to track just because I've never ran before and I don't really have the same technique um, that my teammates have, so that's difficult. Even without the experience, Ashley has gained the respect of her teammates. They gravitate towards her, and uh, even though she may not think she's in a leadership role, she has established herself as kind of a quiet leader. And what's in her future? Oh, well, I'd love to continue running track. Um, I'm not quite sure if I will have the opportunity to, but I really hope I can. Gary Smolyak has a bit more experience than Ashley. He's been running since the seventh grade. And then I did track and cross country every single year of uh, high school. I've been doing it for, for quite a bit. 
Gary's experience took him to new heights this past fall when he won a cross-country national championship. At the track and field nationals, Gary was near the top again, finishing second in the 3,000-meter steeplechase and third in the men's 5K. Gary's accomplishments led him to be named HCC's Male Athlete of the Year. He's just, um, what, I mean this in a nice way, a freak of an athlete because, he, you know, you ask him to do something and he does it. The first thing Coach Musselman asked Gary to do was come to HCC. Coach explained how this program, along with the school's prestigious Rouse Scholars Program, could be just what Gary needed. And he just explained how I could save a lot of money and great program. And I just decided in the end that Rouse and running here would really be the, would really be the best option for me. And I think I made the right decision. Definitely. But joining an honors program added a little more to Gary's plate, something he was ready for. It's still like a good amount of work because where most people would be home from like three to five and on most weekends like having time for like homework I'm either away to meet in like a different state or every day I'm making the commitment to, to be out here and run with the team so I just have to find other time to squeeze in homework throughout the day and just have to make it all work. Coming out of Laurel High School John Tay Miles decided to commit to HCC for a couple of reasons the quality of the track team and money. I didn't have the funds to go to an actual university. So I was like, why not start at a community college first and then, you know, work my way up. So just picked HCC. John Day was a surprise. We had heard someone from Laurel was here. Uh, we didn't really recruit him. He came out and, and started working and all re uh, made an impact right away in his two events, the 200 and 400 meters. Jonte credits coach Eric Henlon with helping him become a much better sprinter. He always keeps everything interesting. Is He pushes you, but he also looks out for you. I've ran better times here than I was doing in high school. The coaches know my full potential, and they every step of the way, they push me to my full potential. So I feel really good. Jonte had a really good meet at Nationals, finishing fourth in the men's 200 meters, and he was part of HCC's second place finish in the men's 4x100 relay. And he has that kind of ability to get to a four-year school and contribute, and maybe hopefully have some of his education paid for. Jonte also has one other special quality. He has gray hair. <laughs> um, pretty much everybody do notice me by my hair because I mean, I'm tall and I got my hair, but I pretty much had almost every hairstyle out from cornrows to plaits to a mohawk. So I was just like, why not just go with my natural curls? It wasn't natural curls, but natural ability that helped propel these three athletes to their spots at nationals. And their talent will probably help them succeed at a four-year school in the future. I'm Mary Lee Adams for Dragon's Lair Update. You can watch full episodes of Dragon's Lair Update online. Go to youtube.com slash HCC Dragon Sports. This summer, we live the year's most compelling moments. Tune in Friday, July 11th for the best of Dragon's Lair Update. Thanks for watching. And remember, go Dragons!